Hey guys, Jimmy Vegas here, and let's carry on looking at how we can implement achievements in Unity. Don't forget, click subscribe, click the bell icon as well. You can stay up to date with all the tutorials in this series. So the good news is, because we've already created that essential global achievement script, everything else we do after takes considerably less time. So don't expect this one to go on for anywhere near as long as the last tutorial. So this one is going to be all about completing a level and let's say get an achievement for that level. Uh, also, also worth pointing out that if we load up this script here, our global achievements, I have reset that player pref of the original uh, achievement, just so as I want to show you later that we can actually activate two achievements in one go, uh, quite simply just to, you know, show uh, the functionality of it all working. So let's say, let's build up the uh, place where we want to set the achievement initially. So when we start, our player is here. And let's say we do everything we need to do, whatever else, you know. And then we get to this tree here, and this is where we complete the level. So I'm going to put a trigger here, which is going to be the level complete. So game object, 3D object, cube. But obviously, you could trigger this in whatever way you see fit, depending on how you complete your own level. Uh, I'm just quickly going to rotate and expand it. Let's say quite long because this whole general area is going to be the completion zone. That's probably too long. Uh, in fact, I'll probably have it as 10. So I'm not going to waste too much time uh, what I'm doing here. But generally, yep, this is going to be the completion area by this tree. So I'm going to set it as a trigger as well and turn off mesh renderer. So now I need to write a script for that level finish. So let's create a C sharp script and we'll have this as level finish. So once again, this would be your own leveling, uh, level finishing script rather than mine. So although we've got it open, there's a few things we need to do first. Let's get rid of void start, void update. And we're going to basically just have void on trigger enter or again, however you end your level. And we're going to need to reference the global achievements script. So let's go to global achievements and we're going to go down here and I'm going to put the annotation again. So this one is achievement 02 specific. So only these ones are going to be for the second achievement. So obviously we need to have the image. So game object and then H02 image semicolon and we don't need a count which is completely fine uh, realistically what we do need to say is we need a separate bool for this one but this one has to be static because this one is going to tell us from the other script that we've basically triggered this achievement so we're going to have public uh, static and bool and I'm just going to call it trigger h02 by default it will be false semicolon so the only way to actually trigger this is going to be via that other script and what we need to do now is if you remember the h code uh, one that references uh, the player pref and that tells us if we're able to trigger it or not so we're going to need one of those again so h02 code would help if I actually put public int before it, wouldn't it? And semicolon. So like I say, it's going to work roughly the same way as we've done before. And because we've already done the code, this is what makes it a whole lot easier. So let's uh, switch to Unity now and let's go to our achievement panel and let's work on the image. So I've already brought in an image and you'll notice this is the same one from the thumbnail of this video. I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate and call it O2 level finish and drag and drop the image straight onto there so that's basically ready for us now we don't need to do anything else to that achievement panel it's a case of activating whatever game object we need to so heading back into the uh and they said unity then i meant visual studio uh, i'm actually going to take this entire coroutine so copy it and let's go below so this one is going to be trigger O2 hatch. And then that one's fine because we're triggering the achievement. 
Next line, that's going to be code equals one, two, three, four, five, four, H O two. Player prefs dot set int. Change that to two as well. So you can see how quickly we're going through this. Set the image to on. Uh, title and description are always going to be the same object because remember they are general variables. So let's uh, change this to completed and we will put here you made a level complete achievement. Uh, set it active, which is what we need to do. Seven seconds. Good. Note off because we're re resetting everything here. So the achievement 02 goes off and then we turn off those two or rather set them to blank, I should say. And then we reset our achievement completely. So that's basically the coroutine for our second achievement ready. We just need to input in here that uh, exact trigger. So down and I'm going to copy this line of code paste it here and this is going to be h02 code and we make it equal to playerpress.get int h02 so at the same time we need to do another if statement and this if statement is going to reference our ability to re-trigger that achievement and we don't want to because we've already triggered it like I said earlier, I've reset the original trigger for the first achievement just so as I can show you and demonstrate that we can do two achievements. So it needs to be if, and in brackets, and the first thing we need to check is the internal trigger. Like, remember last time, the internal trigger was the counting section. This time it's going to be the bool to say, are we triggering? So if trigger h02, is equal to true and h02 code is not equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And remember that 02 achievement code can be anything you want. I would recommend having it as probably a unique digit every time. So maybe I should put this as something else, maybe. Uh, maybe I should put it as 1, 2, 3, 4 six or something i guess it's just a nice easy way of referencing numbers to certain uh, achievements uh, so if so yeah that is true now so if it's true if we triggered it and it isn't equal to one two three four six then open curly bracket and we need to start co routine and in brackets trigger o2 h open close bracket close bracket semicolon and save so that is really it we've literally set up the second achievement trigger within this global achievement script so the last thing to do would be to trigger this bool from the other script so go into your level finishing <coughs> sorry my voice went then level finishing script you need to go global achievements dot uh what did we call it i've forgotten already it was trigger h02. So trigger h02 equals true. Semicolon and save. So next steps is to basically have our achievement log when it's compiled down here. We just need to attach those extra variables, or just one extra variable in this case, which is going to be level finish over here. And then finally, that cube, which is our level finish, which I'm actually going to rename just for convenience. Level finish. And just drag and drop level finish script onto there. And I'm going to save the scene and press play. So with a bit of luck now, we should be able to trigger both of these achievements. And you know what? I think it's over there. Yep, so it's that tree up there. So let's trigger the first achievement. There we go. So remember, that's the one from last time. So now let's go and complete our level. And it's right here. In fact, do you know what? I uh, I did want to kind of bring a point in here because I actually created a fade out screen just to give it a bit more effect. So I'm quickly going to add in that fade out uh, simply because I... Um, 
I just want to add a little bit more to this to give it uh, a way of delaying an achievement as well. I did originally mean to um, do that, and I'm going to do that by an I enumerator and end level, no close bracket, open curly bracket, and so again, this this is probably something I should have prepared earlier, but all I'm doing is just setting a fade screen on. So public game object and fade out. So it'll be in the enumerator fade out dot set active true. And then I'm going to wait for three and a half seconds. So yield return new wait for seconds. 3.5 f close bracket semicolon and after that that's when we set the trigger to set the achievement and then obviously we need to start the coroutine in here and it's probably a good idea now because i've made a, that uh little extra thing here it might be a good way of me showing you how we can actually reset the uh, variables that trigger the achievements so Although that's done, uh, I'm just going to quickly add my fade out to the variable over here. And then what we'll do is we'll reset the first achievement so we can pick it up again. And then we'll do the whole thing. So let's go back to global achievements. And all we need to do is void start open close bracket doesn't need to be private. And we basically need to set right there that player pref as zero, I guess. So we're setting that back to something else so it can re-trigger this line. So if we save that, head back to Unity, press play. And when the game starts, it will reset that player pref. So now we can actually get rid of that line of code or rather that entire method, resave and press play. So now we're gonna have everything together. So let's pick up that first achievement again and then trigger the second one. Awesome. So if I remember, it is, uh, oh, it's there. Yeah, that's the tree. So we've not triggered it. Have we, am I in the right place? Am I in the right place? Uh, I'm not sure if I am. <laughs> oh, it's because I haven't ticked his trigger. Sure I did. Either way, there we go. The level's ending. Ah, so this is another good way of showing what's wrong here. So this all comes down to the uh, problem of ordering within the canvas. So let me tick his trigger on there. And I'm going to bring fade out up to the top of the canvas so achievement panel is now down below there so we heard that achievement trigger so we know that two achievements can be triggered at once so now let's reset achievement two so i'm undoing in the script and having the voice start method back in there and i'm going to change that to h02 save back to unity press play and that will instantly reset our trigger for the uh, player pref. So now we can get rid of that method and save. So although it seems a little bit long-winded this entire video, it has actually been incredibly easy to add an extra achievement into the mix. So when we come to doing the next tutorial, it'll probably be even shorter once again. So let's trigger our level end right there. If I can find it, there we go. There we go. You made a level complete achievement. And perfect, and that is how we've ended the level. And both achievements will work, uh, as long as, remember, the ordering, that was the key to the achievement not appearing on screen. That was the absolute key there. It, the achievement panel probably needs to be on top of everything, so that would be lower in the canvas. So, guys, I hope that's helped. Um, remember, as we get more and more into this achievement making, it becomes easier and easier, quicker and quicker. So next tutorial, we'll make another achievement and it'll probably be shorter than this tutorial. Until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching.